Hi guys, welcome back to Saving Salvage, welcome back to the channel. Um, a little bit different in today's video. In today's video, I'm going to be covering my first ever attempt at spray painting with proper equipment, i.e. a proper spray gun and a compressor, not rattle cans. Um, so this is a, like a set aside from the, the RS3 and the S4 build projects, although obviously it directly relates to them as I will be painting and as, as you'll see in this video, uh, the, the part that I'll be painting is off the RS3, um, but obviously this applies to any, any car, it's just... So this isn't so much a guide really, it's just my experience. Um, I put guide because it's probably easier to understand in the title, but it's really just my experience. I mean, I'm, obviously I'm a complete novice, I've never done this before, so it's kind of what I've learned from speaking to professionals and Googling basically. Um, but we'll see if it worked and I'll show you all the equipment I've bought to, do, to be able to do this. And it is really simple for anyone to do. I mean, all you really need is a set sort of area, a size that you want to be painting. So it's really simple to do. Uh, I'll show you in this video. I just want to quickly mention before we get into the video, um, thank you for all your support so far. It's much appreciated. Thank you for everyone that does like the videos and subscribe. Um, as I say, obviously, if you do like these videos, please do remember to like and subscribe. It does help a lot. And also now we have an Instagram page. I mean, I'll stick the link in whichever corner my body is not occupying on the screen. But if you want to check that out as well and give that a follow, just be mainly like advanced information of when a video is going to come out or some pictures throughout the builds that I normally would be able to put on YouTube. So if you want to check that out and give that a follow, that'd be great as well. And yeah, that's it. Let's get on with the video. So the first bit of equipment we've got is the air compressor. Um, after speaking to a couple of people, some people say you can kind of get away with a 50 litre one, other people say you need a 75. Um, when I had a look, I couldn't really find many 75s and 100 wasn't that much more expensive. So just for peace of mind, I went for the 100 litre compressor. Uh, as you can see, I got it from SGS. Um, it was around, I should really get price. I'll put prices on the screen as well. I'll put them in the corner of how much each thing's cost just to get a running list. I don't think it's overly expensive to get everything. Um, obviously, I'll put the prices up so anyone that, uh, for anyone that wants to look into buying their own equipment, they know how much roughly it will cost. So yeah, that's the air compressor. Next thing is I actually bought a bag of um, airline connectors, as you can see here. Just loads of these little fittings because they will come in handy for when you're fitting airlines and general connections. Um, I mean, I bought a bag of, I think 20, and I've used half of them, so it was well worth buying a bag. And the next thing you need is a moisture trap. Moisture? Moisture? Moisture trap. As pictured here. Um, this basically does as it says it, um, removes any moisture from the airline and it also acts as a pressure regulator. Um, when I when I was painting, um, the air gun said it, it needs a, a pressure of around 30 psi to work. So obviously when this is connected you can set up the pressure according to the gauge. So I just stuck it on 30 psi and it seemed to work fine. Um, so once you've got that, the next thing along is the airline. Uh, you can see the first attempt I bought an airline, which is absolutely shocking. Don't buy cheap, because you'll buy twice. You're just tiny. Although it's all right for probably like an airline blower or something, but look how thin it is. So it was a bit useless really for for the air um, spray gun. So I bought a, a proper rubber hose. Uh, what size is it? It is a 20 bar hose, eight mil. So that seems to do the job. And that's a 10 meter hose, I believe. Right. Next along, I'll go safety first. I bought a mask with some attachments. I don't even know what this is, but I just Googled spray painting mask and it came up with that. So um, just a mask for obviously when you're spray painting to keep the fumes from entering you too much anyway. I suppose you can wear a full body suit if you wish, but I don't really care if the paint got any clothes, so I just used the mask. Next along, spray guns. Now, I've actually filmed this video, I've I have already sprayed um, the wing, 
but I just haven't showed you yet so I thought I'd better test and try I thought I'd better test the equipment before I go making a video on, on what you need and what you do just in case obviously I go to start spraying and realize I need something else so I have already actually sprayed at the point of doing this video um, so I bought two spray guns one was cheap one was not so cheap um, this is the more expensive one, the one I've already used. It's the it's called an iWater AZ3. And um, this is around I'll put the price up, but I think this is around about 85 quid. Um, and that I bought for my base and my clear coat. It's just a better quality gun, just to hopefully help the finish along. Um, the cheaper one I bought is a Sealy gun. You can see here, I mean, it looks pretty much identical, um, but this was only about 25 quid. And I can't remember what model this was. Oh, it's an HVL, oh, HVLP741. I think it's about 25 quid, and I bought that to use for primer because primer isn't as, uh, isn't as important as base or clear. So, obviously, once you put primer on, you can sand that down anyway. So, the finish of primer is not that important. So just to keep things easier, I bought a separate gun for primer and base and clear. So that one is what I'd use for primer. Also got another, I was advised by a sprayer to get another moisture trap that um, just screws into the bottom of the gun. But I actually run out of connectors. Well, actually, no, that's not the reason. The reason I didn't use it is because I don't think the thread was that good and it was leaking a lot of air. So... I ended up leaving that off for the moment. Next, I'll take you over to the paint. Now, if I'm honest, this is the one I struggled the most with. Um, phoned up a body shop, gave him my paint code. He sent me a litre of ready mixed paint. Uh, and then he also sent me, I've got some primer. Some primer, which I haven't used. I've got some, there's my clear coat. My clear coat hardener activator, and I've got some thinners, and I've got more activator, which I don't know actually why I've got that one. Um, but this is where I struggled the most: it's knowing what ratio to mix paints at. Um, obviously, the base coat you mix the base coat being obviously my black paint there. You mix that with thinners. And I did it at a ratio, well, the body shop actually told me to do it at about one to one to one. But the guy I spoke to who used to do my body work, he said do it at one to th three to one. So straight away had conflicting information. I ended up um, doing it at three to one as per the guy that does my body work normally. And that seemed to work perfectly. Um, and the clear coat, that was two to one. So two parts clear coat to one part hardener. Um, and I also got, once they were mixed together, got these paper paper filters. As you can see here, look, just put them in the top of the gun and pour the paint through them just so you're not getting any bits in. Next up is my sanding equipment. Um, I don't have an orbital sand just yet, purely because I haven't needed one. Um, but I have used sanding sponges. Now, the wing that I've already painted, um, obviously you saw it was Daytona Grey. So all we've had to do is a color change on that. Normally, if, you, if the wing was like bare metal, you would first prime it, um, then paint it. But because it was already um, painted gray, we didn't actually need to prime it again. Well. I'm, so, I'm talking like I know, I just got told I didn't need to prime it again. So all, all the, uh, my ex body shop guy said was just to strip back the, um, like the shine on the Daytona Grey, basically key off all the hard, uh, clear coat um, and then just paint base on top of that. So what I actually used is this 3M pad, which is, says 60 coarse. So it's a 60 um, grit, sanding sponge it might actually sound it feels really rough it feels quite actually really coarse but when i was using it it came out actually really smooth and it turned out to be the perfect 
grit to um, sound off the clear coat on the Daytona Grey. And once all that was done, as you might be able to see from the video, you might be able to, I, I don't know if I've taken any videos of me uh, sanding it down, but it was perfect. So um, once I'd sanded all the clear off, it was base coat straight on top of that using the 60 grit. Um, I also have another one here, which is a, I don't even know what that is actually. I don't even know what that says. It says 10, but it's clearly not 10. So I don't actually know what that is. It's less coarse than that one anyway. So I'm gonna start, I was gonna start and dive straight in with the wing. Um, but I thought, no, I probably shouldn't start with a wing since I have no painting experience at all. So I thought I'd start with the um, bottom of the door strip. video the process but I have just test painted so to speak uh, my first ever panel properly with a spray uh, spray gun um, as you can see here it's I've actually used the old wing the wing that I did intend to use but it was too damaged at the front so if you can see here look I've actually painted it and clear coated finished the clear coat about half an hour ago so it's just at that uh, tacky dry stage but it hasn't come out too bad obviously you can see it's quite orange peely at the minute but that will buff out and here is the bottom door strip which I've also done annoyingly I forgot to take pictures of it before but as you can see here look it's not looking too bad so we'll wait till those dry and then we'll buff them and hopefully I can then paint the proper wing which I have got here look I've already prepped it ready for paint I've uh, just taken the top layer of lacquer off got it a nice matte finish ready for a coat of paint so hopefully once I know that the, the wing and the um, door strip have come out okay and that gives me confidence then to give this a go. Right, it's now the next day. Um, we've left the paint to dry overnight, so it should be nice and dry by now, or touch dry at least anyway. So we'll go back to the workshop and we'll put it to video, check out my paint job, see if it's gone well or bad. Right, so now uh, the wing and the door strip have, I've left them for a good four, four to five days now for the hardener to proper cure. So there's no issues there with um, any wet hardener. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to cut, or wet, sorry, not cut, well, I suppose cut. But what we're gonna do now is wet and dry just to remove like the dust and some orange peel that would have settled in it when the, uh, the clear coat was hardening. And then we're gonna, once we've done that, we're gonna um, polish it with a machine polisher. There 
as you can see here, look, I've wet sanded. And if you can see that, can you see the surface has gone really, well, it looks horrible, doesn't it? It's gone really matte. And just looks rubbish. But hopefully now that's just sanded off all the dust particles and the high spots, i.e. the orange peel. So hopefully now I'm going to get the machine polish on it and that should hopefully come up perfect. Keyword hopefully. Now that's it after a couple of minutes of polishing. It's not perfect, there's still some marks on it, but it's actually really hard to do. A little strip like you can see that, that needs some more polishing, like, but it's actually really hard to do on a stand because it just keeps wanting to jump out my hand. So I'll do the rest of it once it's on the car. Right, so I've just done some wet sanding and some polishing on the top half of the wing. So obviously you can see the line on the wheel arch. I've just done this side of it, this strip here, because it's quite hard to do on the stand and I'd rather just put, put it on the car and then polish it properly once it's on the car because it's just easier. But just, I thought I'd show you. Um, so I've just done the top half. I haven't done it perfectly, I've just kind of not rushed it but I don't have the right cutting compound really I've only got this Maguire's correction compound it's not really a fast cut um, or anything for buffing properly so it's gonna it will take a while with this basically so I'm gonna get some proper cutting compound um, before I do the rest of it but here's just a, a quick overview of the results so basically I just used some 2000 grit sandpaper wrapped around one of my sanding blocks just gave it a quick sand to get rid of like, any dust particles that was in the paint and some of the orange peel and this is the result you can see here that you can see you can see there's still some orange peel in it but that will go once I fast cut it properly but as you can see it's pretty good I'm pretty happy with that See the reflection look? It's almost mirror-like. So yeah, really happy with that. And I'm more than happy, once it's cut properly, for that to go on the RS3. So, so there we go, there we have it. My first attempt, obviously don't worry about that, just fingerprints, uh, and that hasn't been cut. Uh, there we go then, there's my first attempt at ever spray painting properly with a gun. I'm actually really happy with how it's come out and it's come out, if I'm honest, a lot better than I expected it to. Right, that's it for today's video guys. I really do hope you enjoyed the video and a bit of a guide slash, not guide, really guide, but an insight into my first painting experience. Oh, I just got dripped on. Got a hole in the roof. Um, my first painting experience with uh, the proper gun, proper equipment, um, maybe not the proper surroundings, but I, in an ideal world, which I might probably do, is I'll probably get a gazebo um, just to pop up in here or pop up outside maybe to help with ventilation, um, just to eliminate some of the dust that can settle in the paint. But as you can see, there wasn't really that much in it and the, the floor's covered in dust and it's not a great environment to paint, but it's, it's come out okay. So um, I probably will look into getting a gazebo, but for, for now, that, that was absolutely fine. But um, yeah, as I say, first experience of painting, um, I hope you enjoyed this video, hope it was uh, somewhat informative. And if any of you watching felt like it might be too much of a daunting task to end up tr try uh, spray painting yourself, and it, it wasn't actually that bad, it was, it was, I wouldn't say easier than I thought, well no, it was easier than I thought, it wasn't, I thought it was going to be a lot more trial and error, messing things up and starting again. Maybe I've been lucky, I don't know, time will tell uh, once I start doing more of these, but 
I am really happy with how my first uh, job came out. I didn't have to, I didn't mess it up basically. I didn't have to strip it back to the primer and rebuild it back up again, build it back up again. It actually went really well. So um, if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a like and a uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And, um, and any tips that any professionals might have going forward, please do drop a comment in the comment section below. That's it guys, uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys.